the next next topic is pelvic exaggeration for rectal rectal cancers is it worth it dr rajat ragunath i'm going to be talking about pelvic exaggeration for rectal cancer and is it worth a patient undergoing this procedure uh, from greetings from my institute the christian medical college well law uh, we i'm working in the department of colorectal surgery uh, so first question when we had this topic was what is pelvic exaggeration so when back in, into history and it was first described by alexander brunswick in 1948 it was not described for a rectal cancer it was the palliative procedure for a carcinoma cervix and that is what it is still been known as as a procedure for gynecological malignancies it had it was associated with high morbidity and mortality so when we started uh, using these terms for rectal cancer it led to a bit of uh, confusion of terminology so this is so the three terms total pelvic excentration anterior pelvic excentration and posterior pelvic excentration for gynecological malignancies the you do a th bso with the rectum that becomes a posterior you do a th bso with the bladder that becomes an anterior you take out the bladder the you a th bso and the rectum that becomes a total pelvic excentration quite simple is that but in the rectum not so much so pelvic excentration in rectal cancer leads to a bit of confusion so would this be a pelvic excentration where uh, might we have taken out the rectum and done a th bso in continuity would this be a pelvic excentration where we have taken out the rectum and apr with the cuff of the vagina would this be an excentration where uh, we have taken out the rectum the uterus the vagina and the bladder or would this be an excentration where we have taken out the rectum the uh, s2345 and the bladder so would that be an excentration so rather than calling it an excentration the better term we felt would be a multi visceral resection which would include the resection of the rectum along with one or more adjacent organs invaded by the rectal cancer and to further make it easier rather than talk about just the organs we are resecting would it not be better if we talk about compartments we are resecting because as all of us know uh, doing a th bso with a rectal resection definitely the morbidity mortality will be much less than doing a sacrectomy with a rectal resection so could we divide this into different compartments so this would be the rectum the central compartment which in a woman would be uh, the uterus the lateral compartments going up to the lateral pelvic wall the posterior compartment being the sacrum in a sagittal view you can see the rectum the posterior compartment the central the anterior and the infra levator so a description of that would make it more easier for us to understand each other as to what we mean when we say excentrative surgery so why do we have to do it unfortunately 15 to 20% of patients come to us with locally advanced rectal cancer and a, a small number also come to us with recurrent rectal cancer and to achieve a negative margin sometimes the tme is not enough so we do uh, we do an extended tme or a multivisceral resection so we need more extensive surgery so this is for me a bit important as to what are the criteria when we would do a multivisceral resection i have divided the patients into two def two separate categories one would be the patient who comes as a locally advanced rectal cancer involving the adjacent organs he or she has not had any previous operation and this is the first time he has been diagnosed with a rectal cancer the second patient is a patient who's had procedures for the rectal cancer and now come with the recurrence contraindications for this procedure would be an inability to achieve surgical margins free of malignancy palliative approach and its role in metastatic disease is definitely not very clear anatomical contraindications absolute would be a poor performance status medically unfit patients anatomically if the bilaterally the sciatic nerve is involved or the circumferential bo bones are involved relative contraindications would depend on 
uh, depend on surgic, uh, surgical expertise, extension of the tumor to the sciatic notch being actually quite tricky, encasement of the external iliac vessels, again very difficult, high sacral involvement above S2, S3, irresectable distant meds and predictive R2 resection are relative contraindications for this procedure. So finally, should we do it and what does the evidence say? So pelvic excentration for rectal cancer, this is a systematic review published in 2013 by Yang et al. showed that complication rates are quite high with a median complication rate of 57% with an IQR of 37 to 100%. Perioperative mortality, though the median was only 2.2%, if you can see the range, it's from about 0 to 25 and local recurrence rate is about 4.8 to 61 percent. Median survival, if I could uh, take your notice to that, can, if, you, if you're doing an excentrative surgery for primary advanced rectal cancer, it is a good median survival of almost three years, but locally recurrent is only about two years. Locally recurrent, untreated, unfortunately the median survival is only six months, Giving chemo and radiation, medium survival between 10 to 17 months, but about half of these patients are non-metastatic and amenable for curative resections. And when they do the curative resection, median overall survival is about 30 months. This is a collaborative paper published in BJS in 2018, uh, which took 27 specialist centers and about 1,184 patients. They found that in recurrent rectal cancer, when we do uh, multivessel resection, if we get an R0 resection margin, the survival is good, with a median survival of about 36 months, three year survival of about 48, and five year about 28. But it starts to plummet if we are getting an R1 or an R2 resection. The, the main message being, if the surgery is advised, we have to get a negative margin. The same can be seen through the kaplan meyer curve, which shows the R1, R1, R0, R1, R2, showing better survival for R0 resection patients. The role of neoadjuvant therapy. In this study, they, said, uh, the stu they studied the role of neoadjuvant therapy, and they found that neoadjuvant therapy in their multivariate analysis did not have an effect on their overall survival. They explained this by saying that neoadjuvant therapy helps us get a R0 resection, but may not affect overall survival in this study. When, when we resect bone, when we had to resect, when they had to resect bone, median survival was better, and in recurrent rectal cancer, 20 to 30 percent of patients needed bone resection to obtain clearance. Patients with positive nodes had a worse survival than those with node negative. This is a study done by 2009, which divided patients uh, who are undergoing multivessel resections based on locally recurrent rectal cancer and locally advanced uh, primary rectal cancer. And as you can see, when a patient has a locally advanced primary rectal cancer, five-year local control and overall survival is much better than uh, locally recurrent rectal cancer, and R0 is quite possible in these cases. In this study, in these published in DCR, showed the morbidity and mortality of these procedures, and R0 rates in this study was about 62%, but in locally advanced rectal cancer, they can be as high as 91%. Recurrence and survival depend on ability to achieve R0. Sacrectomy is something which uh, most of us are a bit hesitant to do because it's, it's a plane that we are not used to, but when required, sacrectomy, at least in these studies, can be done safely, but with a significant morbidity. Mortality, in my opinion, is in acceptable rates, and, but the most important thing is to get the R0, and that depends, and that influences the survival. This is uh, one large study published in Annals of Surgery, which showed uh, between multiple centers from UK and Australia, uh, which for, for locally recurrent rectal cancers, about one third of the patients required a sacrectomy, one fifth required a sixtectomy, and their R0 rates were about 60%. Five year cancer specific survival, as can be seen, R0 good, and as we get R2, it's less. They found that chemotherapy, 
before excentration, improved five-year cancer specific survival for those patients with R0 resection. Something we don't really look for in these patients is the quality of life, because we are, we are quite, uh, we are quite in, uh, uh, looking at the survival. So the quality of life, these patients will have a high chance of having a permanent stoma, sometimes possibly a two stomas with a urinary diversion, sexual and urinary dysfunction, and significant impairment of quality of life. This study published in Annals of Surgery showed that a significant drop in quality of life post-op for the first year, year and a half in all, all domains of quality of life. But interestingly, they said that three, four years down the line, the quality of life starts to improve, probably as the patient starts to accept and adapt to the situation, but never comes back to the normal. In conclusion, it is possible to do Locally advanced rectal cancer has good outcomes in, uh, with multivisceral and excentrative surgeries. Locally recurrent rectal cancer, not so good, but fair outcomes. Best predictor of survival is an R0 resection. One third of the patients who have this will have a clavian dindo 3 or 4. Specialist centers have shown mortality less than 2%. Neoadjuvant therapy has a role does unfortunately increases the complications, makes the surgery a little bit more difficult, but downstaging tumor improves the R0 resection. So take home message, it is possible and worth, but in select patients, in highly specialized centers, after a careful MDT discussion, and definitely after a discussion with the patient. Thank you. The topic is open for discussion. Any question from the floor? Uh, nice presentation, Mr. Raghunath. Dr. Raghunath has uh, discussed everything, I think, possible uh, about this multi visceral excision. And uh, nice presentation. Thank, Thank you. you.